Hey folks, this is Troy here at Swag Off Road. I've been asked to give you guys a uh, impromptu video of an M14 trailer built in 1966. This was given uh, or loaned to the shop by a customer of mine who asked me to essentially turn a military trailer into an expedition style vehicle. I'll give you guys a complete walk around uh, what, uh, what we're looking at. We have these platforms down here that uh, hold the fuel cells, gas cans, I'm sorry, or, or water cans. Uh, there's footman loops right there as well as a footman loop right there to strap it down with. Uh, trailer lights, fully boxed, uh, bolted and welded to the side of the frame. On each end of the trailer, each rear end, there are these uh, two Harbor Freight crank jacks. It allows you to uh, level out the trailer, and when you're sleeping on it, or sleeping inside the trailer, I should say, it'll take you any wobble out of the suspension. So I have both of those on each corner. nice thing about these is uh, because this is an off-road expedition-style trailer, you simply have to pull the pin, and then you can uh, take this thing off, and all that's left. Is, uh, it's just that little nub, so you won't, uh, more than likely, won't hang it up on the rocks. Uh, in addition, we have a bumper that's uh, got some go fast dimple holes in it for no reason other than I thought it looked cool. I got a two inch receiver hitch in back. This is all 120 wall uh, DOM and HREW, both of its inch and a half. But we got a mounting plate here for the high lift jack. Attachment point that serves as the snubber for the tire, as well as a bolt back there. You can see to hold the jack in place. Tire itself is a 35 inch BFG with fancy uh, relock wheels. Again, this was provided by the customer off of his old uh, swing out tire carrier. Uh, the driver's side has, again, white buckets with a reverse light in it as well. Uh, there's also marker lights in it. Again, there's a crank style handle to level out the suspension. We have your water can holder. Nice thing about it is I also made a rack on top of a, I'm sorry, a lid and a rack. And a rack happens to hold five of those things very nicely. This rack itself is built out of an uh, inch and a quarter 065 wall, really lightweight. I welded some nut inserts onto the lid, so it's just uh, two button head bolts that hold this thing in place. It's uh, real sturdy. The lid itself is made out of 12 gauge steel. I got some uh, handles off my old toolbox, some De Desteco style latches. Again, another handle off my old toolbox I never used. Another Desteco style latch. And then I have a padlock here. Keep the honest people honest when you're out uh, camping away from your trailer, out on the trail. Insert a padlock through that. Uh, with this lid, I also made this guy here. Just kind of an access panel. Pull out the pin. Flip up the lid. And you can store whatever you want back there. It's 44 inches long, so... Shotgun, shovels, trail tools, whatever your heart desires. And it's completely sealed, uh, of course, on this side as well as the inside. I'm trying to think what else I'm missing. I uh, skinned the outside with inch and a half, 120 wall DOM, fully welded it to the uh, factory fenders. We have a piece of receiver hitch here. The customer was thinking about making a cooktop or an extension for a barbecue. There's enough room right here to mount a small propane cylinder on each side, it's essentially the same. Uh, the corners are all reinforced, just to prevent it from cracking. We have the tongue box, which uh, again he provided to me. Um, pretty straightforward, a bunch of random stuff in there. So anyhow, worry about that one later. Uh, we have the same uh, part number crank jack up front. Uh, 
Nice thing about this one is I'm able to put it in place, give it a nice firm tug, and it does not rattle. If you undo it a little bit, it rattles. Essentially what I did is made it to where the feet walk up under the here, and then I'm able to crank it. If I put tension against it, so now it doesn't rattle. So this thing shouldn't uh, shouldn't rattle at all when on the trail. Again, I made this box for it here uh, to hold the toolbox. I extended the tongue 12 inches off the uh, factory frame rails. It's fully plated with uh, some eighth-inch steel on all four corners. Uh, like I said, I extended this a foot uh, inside the tongue itself is a 12 inch long uh, male piece to this it has four additional holes in it so you can extend this tongue essentially if you could see through here you'd have a hole here hole here hole here and a hole there so this tongue can be extended uh, an additional foot as well if you're really in precarious situations uh, welded on the factory safety chains off the old pencil hitch that used to be on this thing that the uh, customer has and it's all right here. I think they're extremely noisy and annoying for such a trailer that uh, you spent so much time and energy on to have it rattle. Uh, so as you can see here I made this coupler that allows it to swivel around a bronze bushing in there. You got a uh, bushing here that uh, I provide or sell off the website. Uh, essentially a grade 8 bolt. Big old coupler nut welded right inside there. I've been driving it around a little bit uh, around town today. It's absolutely silent. And uh, the customer has actual D-rings, so these safety chains are just just temporary. Again, we have an eight-way plug with, uh, with trailer brakes. Suspension itself has been flipped. Leaf springs on top of the axle with, I believe, a 3,000-pound axle. Uh, some inexpensive Rancho shocks. Since everything on this was built in 1966, definitely time for a little bit of uh, upgrading and refreshing. Factory shackles, little swag badge because I can. Uh, electric brakes. I will show you guys. I guess the hinges themselves are from the local farm store. Just three hinges. I was able to space it out using, I think, one inch square tubing. We do have a uh, tent trailer on top. You can see that folds out this way. So we'll undo this. Undo this. Undo this. And push up on it. Now I have two 225 pound gas springs off McMaster car. They're the 8 millimeter version, around $21 a piece. I don't know the part number, but they are the longest ones for around $22. It's a 225 pound spring rate. So those work well. Uh, one handed, a little bit of muscle, comes down and stays down just barely. Uh, spacers that I use are off my uh, drop-down tailgate kit that I sell. I have one there. So right down there. As well as two on the opposing side. Right there and right down there. Uh, the lid itself, as I mentioned, there's this box section here. That, uh, that's where this access panel is for the, the goodies. Uh, there's angle iron welded around the perimeter of this piece. So you can put a lip seal on it to keep uh, keep rain out of it, hopefully. I use the same spacers that I used right there to space off the hinges or the uh, toggle latches right there. Again, just welded on and bolted in place. Pretty straightforward operation. Got marker light, as you can see. Um, again, this trailer's running 35-inch tires. Hey, buddy. Here's my sidekick in crime. Hey, Lane. Say hi. Hi. Yeah, my little boy. Oh, I think that, uh, that about covers it. I don't know the weight on this thing. I, uh, 
have to take it to the scales this evening and report back to you guys. Thanks for watching. If you got any questions, let me know. Uh, everything on this Jeep has been drawn up in CAD, so if you like a part that uh, you think you'd like to have yourself, send me an email, troy at swagoffroad.com, and we'll, uh, we'll be in touch. In one head operation. Walk in place, you're good to go. Take care. Bye-bye.